مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنام وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخلق ما لا تعلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ومن ولا Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of our program, The Universal Quran. Last time, of course, we talked about some verses of Surah Al Hajrat and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for those who lowered their voice and so on in the presence of the Prophet. Today, inshallah, we are going to talk about also another crucial and a very very important verse and a very essential verse of the surah itself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqun binabain fatabayyanu fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bijhalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says oh you who believe if somebody the Quran here is 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 titled him or is called him as an impious person brings you any kind of, of news you have to make sure of that this is the, the meaning of the verse of course this is not the exact or accurate translation uh, make sure of that so you might hurt some people by, by your words and then after that you will be uh, uh, regretting or you will regret what you said this verse we could say if we uh, listen carefully if we take it as uh, as I said before put it in the frame and then consider it as uh, one of your constitutions you will never of course go astray the Quran here is drawing our attention to a very 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 important and a very dangerous thing which is about news that some people for example carry some people by mistake accuse innocent people in our societies, in our communities, if you follow what's being uh, pressed, what's being written in newspapers and magazines, you'll find many accidents happen. Many innocent people were killed for no reason but because of a false report, because of a false rumor, because people uh, didn't try to verify whether this news is authentic or not, didn't try to make sure then try to go to the person himself and ask him, Sir, have you done that? Sister, have you done that? And so on. The Quran, in order to protect the families and in order to safeguard the whole Muslim community, for example, in the issue of fornication, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شَهَدَاءِ فَجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَى Those who accuse the chaste woman and they don't bring proof to support their sayings, then lash them 80 lashes or give them or punish them with 80 lashes. This is their punishment because they, why the Quran is doing that? In order to protect the family, the, the structure, in order to safeguard the whole family system. It, it, it was reported, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab anhu ardaha, punished three people with 80, lash, with 80 lashes for each one of them because they accused uh, one of the ladies of committing fornication. We know that in Islam, to prove or to say that this thing happened, we must support or we must provide for witnesses. And their testimony must be the same. And their words must be the same. If there is any kind of disagreement among them, for example, one of them said, I saw him, for example, or I saw her uh, in the street, which is called so and so. And another person said, no. I saw her in another street, then their testimony cannot be accepted and they must be punished because they are talking about the owner or about a person who might be innocent. Uh, back to the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If somebody brings you any kind of news, make sure, uh, try to confirm or try to uh, find the authenticity of this report or of this news. The verse was revealed. When one of the people, as the Mufassirun said, 
One of the people is called Al Walid ibn Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. This is his name. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, go to an area or to go to the people of Bani Al Mustaliq and try to collect the zakah from them. He didn't go for one reason or another. And then after a while, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said to him, oh, I went to those people. They do not want or they refuse to pay the zakah and they were about to kill me. According to his report, some of us said that the Prophet Sallam, he arranged for a battle, he arranged to fight those people and he went. Some other of us said no, he didn't go there and he was about to go. Uh, anyway, but before doing that, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse and he, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, called the one who brings such news to be a person who is not uh, a righteous, a person who is not pious, a person who is not very good. Because according to this report, according to any report that any person might bring, for example, a kind of war might uh, uh, break up anyway. So you have to uh, try to find the truth and you must not carry or you must not report anything which is not authentic or even if it was authentic and then it's going to create a big mischief you shouldn't do that you have always try to concentrate on yourself and try to try to find uh, uh, just a breakthrough or try to find uh, a kind of exit for yourself on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask you about the whole community will not ask you about the whole people but he will ask you about yourself again as I said uh, uh, we need to, as, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Try to commit yourself to your own home. Try to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. Try to uh, provide yourself with piety and with provision, as the Quran says. And try to prepare for the very long journey that nobody knows when it's, it ends except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, whenever... Uh, 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 I'm not quite sure whether it was Imam Al-Hassan Al-Basri or anybody else when he was told that somebody for example talked badly about him he would carry something like fruit and go to the person and said okay he gave me his good deeds and I am going uh, his good reward or he gave me his hasanat and I am going to give him the best that I have something like fruits like gifts so he didn't get uh, uh, irritated or he didn't get angry because of hearing something and again if somebody for example said to you brother uh, this person is saying that you are for example not you are a dishonest person you are a bad person first of all try to find an excuse for your brother and try to say oh may Allah forgive him for example but if he said something which is dangerous or something which might uh, uh, constitute a kind of danger to you and your life then you have to interfere. The best example we have here is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day one of the Bedouin people came to him and he grabbed the Prophet Sallallahu from his dress and he said to him, okay, give me the money you have. It's not yours. That's not the money of your family. And then the Prophet Sallallahu uh, he didn't do anything to this man. And he said to him, just you are going to be somebody is going to take my right from you because this is not the, the best way by which you can talk to your messenger and then the man because he knows the Prophet ﷺ, he was very merciful to all humanity as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him he is not uh, mercy just to human beings but to the whole world to the jinns to animals to uh, human beings and so on the man said to him but you are not going to do that and then the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him why the man said, because you are treating the bad deeds with good ones. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, okay, you have been forgiven and take what you want. In another occasion, uh, while the Prophet ﷺ was uh, distribu distributing the spoils of wars among people, one of the people, he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, uh, deal justly, kindly to me because you are not doing uh, justice to people, you are doing injustice to people. And then Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab got very angry and he said to him, how can you say that in front of the Prophet? How can you say that to the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as source of justice to spread justice among people? The Prophet said to him, leave him, leave him. 
it's, it's okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, uh, so the Prophet didn't get angry at all. So, as if, if that was the case with the Prophet himself, the chosen Prophet, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose among all humanity to be his messenger. So how about you? If somebody, for example, insulted you, or for example, offended you in something which is not very important, say, okay, akhi, may Allah forgive you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, radiallahu anhu, one day, he was offended by very, very bad words. And then, uh, when the man went, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he didn't respond, and he didn't have a very harsh reaction, for example, but he said, okay, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive this person. And when the man who offended the Imam went home, he said to himself, how can I do that to a great jurist like Ahmad ibn Hanbal? And then the next day, when the morning came, the man ran to, uh, to apologize for Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And Ahmad ibn Hanbal said to him, Akhi, make sure that you didn't leave your place yesterday, but I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. So it's a very crucial thing. It's something which is very important. That again has caused many problems and many incidents and many innocent people were killed because of a false report, because of a kind of rumor, because of a false news, because people didn't try even to exert an effort to verify or to make sure whether this report is right or not, whether this news is authentic or not, whether the person is speaking the truth, that's fine. But he must have a kind of proof. He must have some evidence to support his argument. He can't say something without an evidence, without having any proof. So we need to ask him, okay, where did you hear that? Do you have any proof? Do you have any, for example, record of, of what this person said? And then after that, you need to make a kind of investigation. Because nowadays, many people are mischievous. Many people are trying to create mischief in the land, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Many people are trying to uh, make people uh, not familiar with each other and want to create, for example, hatred and want to create fights and uh, wars and so on. So if somebody is, is bringing any kind of news, okay, you need to verify, make sure uh, if he is speaking the truth, uh, he might be a big liar, for example. In that case, in that case, sorry, we can't accept or we must reject his testimony. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also, and to see qawman bi jahalatin ala min You might cause a kind of hurt. You might cause a kind of offense to some people. And then after that, you will regret. After that, you will be very sad because you will say to yourself, how can I accuse this innocent person? You have deteriorated his family. You have... Uh, made this person, for example, unhappy. You have made him, for example, divorce his wife because for a false report that you said about him, for a false report you said about his wife, for something which is not true, you said about his daughter, for example, and then the daughter uh, has been hurt, or the daughter, for example, she faced some troubles, or many people, they lost their jobs, many people, they, they, they left their homes uh, because of some false reports because of some bad people who are trying to uh, uh, make mischief in the land. <laughs> واجعلني من عبادك الصالحين القانتين واجعلني من أوليائك المقربين يا أرحم الراحمين يهدي به الله من اتبع Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned those who uh, like the, the bad things to be common among people by a painful punishment in this life and in the hereafter as in Surah An-Nur Again in the same Surah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ وَغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَةِ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who accuse chaste women, who accuse innocent women by doing immorality, لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They have been cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are away from Allah's mercy in this life and in the hereafter. And also, what's, what's more, that a great and a painful punishment is prepared for them in the hereafter. So, if you see anything, for example, if you see one of the women, you would say, okay, I might be mistaken. She is not the person uh, I know, for example. This is not the wife of so and so, or it is not your affair at all. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the sound hadith, من حسن إسلام المر تركه ما لا يعنيه One of the best things about uh, or if a person, the person who has a complete or whose, whose faith is complete, he shouldn't interfere in something which doesn't concern him. It's not your problem, it's not your affair to know whether this, for example, the wife of so-and-so. It's none of your business to know whether this person is good or bad. Just try to concentrate on yourself. Try to ask yourself one question every night, every day. When the morning comes, when the night comes, ask yourself, uh, has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted my deeds or not? Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, for example, pleased my deeds or not? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather me among the good ones or the bad ones? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit me to paradise or I will be among those who are going to be punished in hellfire? If you can think about these things in general, you might not be able to sleep. Uh, sorry, you might not be able to sleep because one day, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib while he was about to pray, so they said to him, Oh Imam, what happened? You are unable to say even takbirat al-ihram, to say just Allahu Akbar. He said to them, I remembered uh, what does the word Allahu Akbar mean and I am unable to say it because it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything, is greater than the whole universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you and everything you do. If you are accusing people uh, uh, or if you are trying to, for example, make false reports about people just to make them lose their jobs, to, uh, to cause a kind of mischief, to, uh, for, for example, I'm sorry, to make a person, for example, uh, divorce his wife and so on, to, to marry her again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never please your deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare a painful punishment for those people who are trying to do so. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to maintain the whole Muslim family, the whole Islamic community in general. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although he made, for example, divorce allowed, but he doesn't like it because divorce will lead in many bad results like uh, breaking the family and the children uh, uh, might be homeless and so on. There are many bad things that might uh, happen as a result of divorce and so on. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, warned us against these things and warned us against involving in uh, such false reports or involving in bad uh, uh, behavior like that. A Muslim can never do that. The one who has a good faith, who has a complete faith must never involved, must never engage in such things because all of which at the end will spoil your deeds and you might come on the day of judgment and you have zero good rewards. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said that when he asked the companions, do you know who is the bankrupt? They said to him, the bankrupt according to our own understanding is the one who doesn't have money. This is what we know about, for example, bankruptcy. But he said, no, this is what you know, but I mean the real bankrupt is the one who, although he made hajj, he prayed, he performed fasting, and he did all these things, but on the day of judgment, he will come with nothing at all. Why? Because he insulted one person, and he made false reports about another one. He slapped this person, he hit this person, and he usurped the money. He usurped some people's rights and so on. And on the Day of Judgment, he will lose everything because people will take his good deeds and will give him their bad deeds. We have to be warned against these things and we have to prepare ourselves for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good rewards. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all our deeds 
and to bless this month and to make our fasting accepted and to bring us closer to him. At the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وترى الجبال تحسبها جامدة وهي تمر مر السحاب صنع الله الذي أتقن كل شيء إنه خبير بما تفعلون مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخرج